welcome to this very special live cast that we have going on here tonight and uh so good to be here with you we haven't done a live cast in a while and um of course this is something that i usually do with evie hi evie how are you tonight so tonight we're going to be talking about well that tucker interview with uh vladimir putin and the thing that's that's actually most interesting to me about this is that um well, it was how the reaction of the system was to all of this. So the system, by the system, if you saw my little promo video saying we're going to be doing this thing tonight, the system was, um, well, CNBC, CBS, uh, NBC, CNN, the New York Times, propaganda outlets, right? Mm-hmm. They were just absolutely um, very much not interested in uh, having Tucker make these calls at all or, or sit down with Vladimir Putin. So we're going to be talking about that now. Um, mm-hmm. Gosh, yeah, if it's only... shocking how much of a reaction everybody had. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, if, only, if only I had some slides. If only you could... Uh, do you think you could close that window? Right there? You know? So, all right. Now, hmm. if only I had some slides. Oh, I do. I do. Um, so let's go there real quick because I love these slides. So... This was interesting to me. Uh, so this was the opening of, of Tucker's interview right here. And uh, he's standing right there in Moscow. And, and he said, he opened it up and he said, gosh, you know, I, I kind of wanted the dynamic punchy interview like we all do. And uh, <laughs> Putin, bless his heart, rewinds to like the 800s. He's like, I need I some context. <laughs> right? he's like, give you the whole history. I have to start in the year 932 with you know, Oleg or whatever. Uh, it, it was a very long comprehensive thing, but you know what, you know what, you know what? I can't think of a single president in my adult lifetime that could have done that. Just sat down, no notes. Right. Started. With all those dates and people and. Yeah, all of it, right? It's pretty wild. Yeah. He has an impressive mind. He does, he does. Uh, so Evie and I are just freshly back um, in town from Phoenix, where we were for a while for the FLCC meeting. So we have a little bit of context around that. But all right, so <clears throat> so he so Putin talks uh, talks with Tucker, um, and but you know what? It, there was this like, look at this. You're wearing the same jacket. I am wearing the same jacket. Sorry. Cool. Uh, it's <laughs> that was totally unintentional. But Newsweek says exclusive Tucker Carlson could face sanctions. <laughs> what, sanctions? What are they going to do? Limit his oil exports? <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like a threat, doesn't it? No, no. So, 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 this we have. This was really unfortunate because we had all these so-called journalists who haven't said a single word about Julian Assange. Didn't care when Gonzalo Alira was killed by Ukrainian thug, thugs right in prison right. for being a journalist, mm-hmm. right? Merely saying things that Ukraine didn't like. They they said nothing about that, but they're very unhappy that uh, there is a journalist that's in prison in. Russia and it's a it's a New York Times sorry a Wall Street Journal journalist um but they caught him with secrets like their secret service caught him receiving secrets and they said oh but he's a journalist like mm-hmm oh, I see mm-hmm More to the story. <clears throat> uh, yeah there's there's quite a bit um so it's a very different thing from somebody who's who's legitimately trying to tell a story but you know it could get murky it could get murky so anyway sanctions right um here here's what uh here's what they wrote uh-huh they said Tucker's interview with Russian President Vladimir Putin could see the conservative pundit targeted by European Union lawmakers. Lawmakers. <laughs> as soon as they finished scraping the shit off of their buildings from all the farmers. <laughs> all the manure. They got all the, manure the manure, right. <laughs> the, the liquid fertilizer. Uh, as soon as they get done with that. Um and former members of European Parliament have told Newsweek, uh, Carlson visited Russia, said he would soon be releasing an interview with a Russian leader. Now, now this is what people do when they're journalists. They go and they interview people. And I could pull up, and I didn't bother, but show you Putin giving interviews to lots of people. So I saw this one journalist say, oh, but you know what? We're at war with Russia. It's a very different thing. And so there's this espionage act, you know, where you're handing secrets or helping the enemy. But maybe he could be giving information to Putin that would be helpful to him. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I seem Do to you remember, remember a long time ago where people used to give way more interviews like this, where it was like 
you get to see different sites. Sure. Right. My, my, where I got, are you going? Where I'm going? I got to finish the point, which is we're not at war with Russia. To be at war with a country, you have to declare it. This would be a of duty of Congress, right? To de anymore, to declare don't. a war. So this that, that was a journalist for like some major outfit. They're like, we're at war with Russia, as everybody knows. Like, no, I don't. You know, <laughs> I don't know any such thing, um, because we're not at war. We're we're not in any way, shape, or form at war. We are in a proxy sort of skirmish, and we're doing some things that seem warlike. But I I think you it, the con Constitution is very clear. Only Congress mm -hmm. can actually declare war so they would have to do that and that has not yet happened all right so there's that um carrying on uh they say here um the lawmaker who has called for the eu to explore imposing a travel ban on carlson <laughs> you know if this was the taliban doing this i'd be like yeah that makes sense uh this is so dystopian at this point in time like why like they and they don't the whole article they don't explain what the actual substance of the like they're just like they're outraged and they want to sanction him they want to travel ban like but why what laws did he break and, and what they're basically saying is is tucker has offended the sensibilities of the current ruling class and he's embarrassed them a little bit mm -hmm. and they're a little embarrassed all right so um because he's daring to to host an interview that they haven't bothered to have <laughs> or because Putin's going to say something that would be uh, more in line with the actual truth and, and not what they've been, not the words he's been putting in, they've been putting in his mouth, rather? Well, yeah, they've, they've built up this whole narrative about Putin. He's an evil man, and that's the end of that. And they just don't want anybody sort of um, interfering with their brand development yeah. or something. I don't know. Anyway, so this is where, so uh, please don't hate me. Strong stomach. Um, <laughs> this is going to be hard to take, but we're going to take one for the team All right. just because, um, so, so it's very funny. Uh, uh, Scott Adams, uh, the Dilbert guy, he, he yep. said, he said in response to this particular interview, he said, you know, her and Adam Schiff and it's like all these Democrats went to a specific school to, for lying and they all do the same thing It's chin up in the air with too much of a smile for the content of what they're trying to say and it's just about as fake as one of those old animatronic robots in old like you know future world down at disney circa 1992 right that that's how i <laughs> that's, okay that's how i interpret this at any rate see if we can see if we can listen in on this i mean he's like a puppy dog you know he somehow has after having been fired from so many outlets in the united states he, uh, I would not be surprised uh, if he emerges with a contract with outlet because he is a useful idiot. Tucker is a useful idiot. It, but look at the look at the body language here. No, not just a useful idiot, but yeah, yeah. So literally every every time I hear Hillary talking about something, um, to me it's it's a it's a clear sign of. Um, uh, it's just all projection if it's not lying. That's how I, I'm literally everything, right? Truly deplorable to me. Somebody who, who has this much difficulty with truthfulness and, and reality, that's how I experience this lady. He says things that are not true. He parrots Vladimir Putin's uh, pack of lies about Ukraine. Uh, so I don't We're gonna go into see those. why Putin wouldn't give him an interview because through him... He can, you know, continue to lie about what his, you know, objectives are in Ukraine and, and uh, you know, what he expects to see happen. Let me consult my decoder ring. Oh, that means Hillary lies about what our objectives are in Ukraine. Okay, <laughs> keep going. It's really quite sad that not just somebody like Tucker Carlson, who has, as I said, been fired so many times because he seems unable to you know, correlate his uh, reporting with the truth, um, but also because he, mm -hmm. it's a sign that there are people in this country right now who are like a fifth column for Vladimir Putin. And why? I don't know. I mean, why are certain Republicans throwing their lot in? Why? Are I, I can I can explain this. I can explain this. Um, it seems that way, Hillary, because you are doing and your people who are like you are doing and this includes the uniparty this is uh rhinos and dnc all 
Y'all are doing such a terrible job running this country that literally a rotting log would be would probably win. In fact, we saw this. Did you know this, Evie, that that uh, Nikki Haley had to go up against a fearsome foe in Nevada and she lost 60 to 20, 60 percent to 20. You know who that foe was? <laughs> literally, it was because Trump wasn't on the ballot. It was none of the above. None of these candidates. She lost 60, 20 <laughs> to nobody. <Really? laughs> yeah. That's how bad. That's how bad. And of course, Nikki Haley is just like uh, a, a, I'm sure, a, a somebody that Hillary Clinton respects and admires a lot. Because they're all from the same useless enemy class that are here harming my country. Yeah. That's, I'm not going to pull punches anymore. They're they the are. Group of mean girls. Th- well, mean girls, but dumb mean girls. They, they, <laughs> mean girls. They're like, what if we just ruin this country we live in? What's the worst that could happen? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> It could be very bad. Anyhow, I mean, um, he's- uh, no more of that. So um, anyway, they sat down for a long time. It was a two hour plus thing. And, and you know, I was, uh, it was, it was a, all the way through it? I did. Um, I, I was a little disappointed. I wanted more. I, I honestly, I'd, I'd heard a lot of these motifs and refrains before, but there are a couple pieces we're going to talk about um, that, that I think are worth reviewing. But first, we're going to have a little more fun with um, the deplorables. OK, so here's. Uh, MSNBC, this this is just, this is going to be good. You know it's going to be good. Ready? Um, am I allowed to say his name? Yes, yes, I'm just... His name is Tucker Carlson, and he is the only American journalist. <laughs> Double air quotes. Nice. Yeah. Who has been able to interview... By the way, who, who is this woman? I don't know. I don't know. Putin since the invasion in 2022. Tucker Carlson is not a journalist. Not even close. <laughs> He kind of just walks right into Moscow and presents himself on a silver silver platter to the Kremlin, doing the Kremlin's job of misinforming, disinforming the American population. His explanation of why he's doing it, that he's a journalist and he needs to inform people, he can call himself whatever he wants. I think uh, his work is demonstrable as not being just about giving people information. He has a point of view, and often it's not aligned with the facts. Right. That made a whole lot of sense. He has a point of view that's not always aligned with the facts. Said Chris Cuomo. <laughs> you got to have fun with this. Is just it, you know if 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 these people didn't have projections and double standards, they'd have nothing. Uh, nothing at all. It's just the most astonishing if you watch thing them every ever. Day, though, would you be believing them, listening to them right now? Yeah. No. If that's all you heard. Like if that was your favorite, you know, talking yep. head. Hmm. But but literally every one of these things is not journalism. These are all opinions they're giving. So remember, Chris Cuomo's like, well, they're not. They, he doesn't give the facts. <laughs> he says it's as he's, as he states as an opinion. <laughs> it's just you can't make this up. It's it's good stuff. Good stuff. Anyway, this is fun. Putin talks to an American friend. The Russian president turning to right wing conspiracy theorist Tucker Carlson. And a- right wing conspiracy theorist. Mm hmm. Classic. Comes as All the Kremlin propagandist Tucker Carlson, a leading voice of the right wing disinformation campaign, is in Moscow. The leading voice of the disinformation campaign. Hmm. Hmm. Well, isn't that interesting? Well, um, you know, I think what we're going to be seeing here is uh, uh, that. Uh, <laughs> Are they all saying the same thing? Yeah, pretty. Yeah, so. Was it like they had. You know, passed around the talking. Well, well, so th- this is serious because because you know the the here's what happened with with um with COVID. So they lost the battle, right? They Goliath, as Brett Weinstein says, right? So they lost the battle, and the reason was, and I love how Brett sums this up, because of podcasts, right? They just weren't ready for the information that came out that that talked about things that all turned out to be true about the harmfulness of the various approaches and the lab leak and all of it, right? The magic holy juice, right? All of it. And so uh, so they learned their lesson. And so what they're really going to rally around this time is they have to demonize misinformation, disinformation, malinformation, all of which are a way of saying information that's inconvenient to the story they want to tell. Mm-hmm. Whether it's right or wrong is irrelevant. It's that they get to classify what is what. And that's what they're doing here. And so they've classified Tucker as misinformation. Now, Nobody gets everything right. I'm not saying Tucker gets everything right, but I will tell you that his stuff has been vastly better than any of these other raggedy outfits that we're looking Ironically, at here. Ironically, he is there in the name of keeping Americans informed, sitting down for an interview with Vladimir Putin. 
Tucker Carlson is neither a journalist uh, nor a reporter, but he has played one on TV. Tucker Carlson <laughs> still doesn't have a job. He's oh, in guy. Moscow house He's hunting, I hope. But no, actually, Tucker is there to interview Vladimir Putin, which is so overtly ridiculous. Yeah, Tucker Carlson interviewing Vladimir Putin uh, may not be uh, mean much to you, but for Trump, this is like watching OnlyFans. <laughs> This is insane. I... You've seen sharp relief, a Republican Party that is now doing Vladimir Putin's bidding. Donald Trump always did. <laughs> All right. And somebody All right. that we, can go we on know. Uh... So, 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 so that's, that's, that's pretty deplorable stuff right there. Um, but it was a wall, right? So I'm just, that's what I'm getting at here. It was a complete wall and it included the late night hosts. It included... NBC, CNBC, CNN, and all of that, right? And and just to show you, like, what really... This is, like, real journalism. You want to know what they... They wanted real journalism, okay? Real journalism. Evie, I don't know if you've seen this, but this is an example of the high journalism standards that CNN is saying they wish they could see with a real journalist talking to Putin. As a human being, so many people look up to you. They rely on you. No one can imagine how hard that is. Do you, oh God. do you do anything for your, to yourself? Are you ever able to take a minute to, to, <laughs> the music to listen to music over, okay. or something to sort of give yourself that, uh, a moment? I have such moments, important, to be in silence, <laughs> to be alone. And early, early in the morning, when there are no This is how bad, this is, we're in bad shape right no now as a country, only, okay? Not, and this is, our, our journalism people, is a our little father, bit... No, Nobody is, is not is doing so good. Cabinet, okay, I all right. Just that. Think, think. But seriously, when I first saw that, I, I couldn't believe it was real. I know. I thought that was a joke. I thought that was like AI, like some kind of parody craziness. Like, wow. No, but people watch that, right? Mm -hmm. They actually do. And so, um, isn't that an interesting thing? All right, so uh, let's carry on. Um, Oh, this, yeah, these are these folks, this is the kind of journalism standards that, that really, honestly, they're hoping they could reinforce the idea that you would never find Tucker in this montage really drives them nuts. They don't like it. They hate this because, because if he, if he was a, if he was a true journalist, he would have a spot. We would see him in this montage. This is, this this is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our democracy. democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. It's extremely dangerous. <laughs> you know what's extremely dangerous to democracy? An uninformed electorate. Uh, a bunch of a bunch of mindless mm -hmm. automatons, right? Mm -hmm. um, all right. So so even before though, it wasn't just the it wasn't just the journalists, it wasn't just late night hosts, it was also the State Department. So this is uh, John Kirby of the State Department reacting to, he's just talked about Ukraine a bit, and then a reporter says, oh, hey, don't you think maybe it's possible? Well, maybe you can hear it. The reporter's a little light, but basically is asking, do you think maybe, you know, Tucker's going to, with Putin, maybe undermine some of this dwindling Ukrainian support? So let's listen in to what the, how the State Department characterizes this. State Department. You know, watch Tucker Carlson's show and how are inclined already to be skeptical of American support for Ukraine, would hearing directly from Putin potentially erode that further, not just in the halls of Congress, but among the people? The American people know well who's at fault here. And I think they know that there was no ground whatsoever for the invasion on February 22nd, two years ago. The, uh, he, he invaded... No grounds whatsoever. No grounds whatsoever for the invasion, he said. Hold up. We'll finish that quote for in just a minute. I have to stop right there. No grounds, right? And and this is, you know, no. this is what you heard, right? Um, so uh, you saw that the EU had a statement regarding Russia's unprovoked and unjustified military aggression against Ukraine. You saw that uh, USAID, which is like a USAID organization, like unprovoked and unjustified attack in Ukraine. We had uh, the APCU unprovoked attack, almost like they had a focus group unprovoked attack wait a minute hold on war of aggression against uh was an unprovoked and unjustifiable uh or it was in this case uh down here uh unprovoked aggression um and yes yeah, just unprovoked so so that's that's the story they're going with right and it just goes on and on um you know unprovoked premeditated unprovoked 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 so so this is something i covered at the time so 
look at this. This is a from the European Union. They had the um, OSCE was a group of people from a bunch of countries, and this is March of 2020. Remember, the attack was in February of 2022, 22. right? Mm -hmm. So look at this, March of 2020, they have this plenary, they're looking at the Minsk agreements because they had this whole thing where there was this breakaway province thing happened in 2013 and 14, mm -hmm. and it got a little dicey, so they set up a Minsk agreement, which was all around how there weren't going to be any more attacks or bombings or any of that other stuff. And so this is part of the context that, that Putin was giving. So in 2014, 2014, they had a peace plan, right? And it involved leaders from France and Germany and Ukraine and Russia, the Normandy Four. They agreed to a ceasefire package of measures. But since then, so this is 2020, since 2014, violations of the ceasefire continue to flare up along the line of contact as the death toll has risen to some 13,000 and up to 30,000 have been wounded. So... If you could imagine, maybe, that there was so, or, you know, Americans or, or English-speaking people in, say, a province of, of Mexico, and that we cared, and let, let's imagine somehow Texas got given back. Some, our, our president is enfeebled and is drunk, just like Khrushchev was in 54, and just says, ah, and signs over Texas to Mexico, right? <laughs> you know, can't, I know, it's, I'm, it's wild fantasy dystopian screenplay time, but it's just how we might imagine it. And, and then all of a sudden, Mexico says, you know what? We hate these people. We just don't get along. You know, we've tried to tell them that they can't speak English anymore. They have to only speak Spanish, you know, that they can't have uh, any of their customs. You can't do Easter or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And and the English speaking people in that breakaway province of Texas, you know, like, hell no. You know, we, we've been we've been part of America since its founding, which that portion of Ukraine. This was um, the point of, of Putin, that portion of Ukraine that we're talking about, those eastern provinces of the Donbass, those had been in Russia, part of Russia since 800, 900. That's, where he, that's why he had to start the story back there. Okay. Right. So, so then, um, so they had 13,000 people killed, right? And they had 30,000 wounded. And if you read the stories, this was kind of dark, right? These were these Azov battalion types. They would bring in their 155 artillery and they would specifically wait for farmers markets to develop and they would shell them, right? This wasn't like skirmishing and 13,000 people died in trenches with machine guns in their hands. They were just shelling civilian areas. So they were unhappy with that. Okay. And they hadn't liked that. And, and all along the way, Putin was like, this is huge restraint from my perspective. 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And finally in 22, he's like, okay, we're all done with this. And you want to know why? Because this, this is also from the OSCE. These are officially recorded people, they, um, uh, official peacekeepers and recorders from the West. This isn't Russian statements. These are OSCE peacekeepers. They said on February 15th, the OSCE recorded 41 ceasefire violations as Kiev's forces began shelling the Donbass, mostly civilian areas. So that was pretty typical. 10, 20, 30 a day. Stepped up to 41. And then on February 16th, 76 violations. On the 17th, 316 sees 316 separate explosive yeah. shelling moments right that's awful isn't it and then like a na -na 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 -na. and that it was on february 18th when they had 654 violations biden smart as he has predicted i think russia's gonna attack but of course we had all this information and in fact we were supplying the shells to the ukrainians to do this so wasn't that much of a prediction, right? At the time, I was like, I didn't know if they were going to attack. I wasn't sure, but Biden predicted it and then it happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe he's got better information. But look at this February 19th, 1,413 separate ceasefire violations. And on February 20th to 21st, 2,026. And then on February 22nd, the day of the invasion, there was 1,484 separate ceasefire yeah. 1,484. That ramped up quick. Does that sound like uh, it's virtually all by the Kiev side, right? They were just sending shells Unprovoked. in. Unprovoked? <laughs> no. Unprovoked. <laughs> that does not sound... Un, 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 unprovoked. That's, it's an unprovoked thing, but this is just the context. This is the kind of context that we bring to you at Peak Prosperity all the time. It's important, right? It just gives you context. Mm -hmm. But it also shows the extent to which every single thing from USAID to the New York Times to, to, to they were all just lying and repeating the same parrot of lies, right? Which is unprovoked, unjustified attack. You tell me if your town or the city you lived in suddenly had a thousand 
artillery shells land in it. Would you think responding to that in any way would be unjustified? No, of course not, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. So at any rate, um, back to this then. Let's see if we can... You know, You're too quiet, Evie. Yeah, yeah, I know. So I don't know if you can... You gotta, you just gotta... I, please I just gotta talk kiss up. the microphone. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll try. You know, watch Tucker Carlson's show and how are inclined already to be skeptical of American support for Ukraine, would hearing directly from Putin potentially erode that further, not just in the halls of Congress, but among the people? The American people know well who's at fault here. And I think they know that there was no ground whatsoever for the invasion on February 22nd, two years ago. The, uh, he, he invaded a neighboring country with, without provocation. Or, Ukraine wasn't a threat to anybody, and the American people understand that. And the American people understand what... Do they now? You know what? Gaslit. You know what, Kirby? <laughs> Many more of those Americans now understand that, that you're a liar, a complete lying sack, because obviously thousands of shells landing is not unprovoked. And the only thing the American people understand is how much they've been gaslit and how little context the media has actually been providing, which would be important and relevant. I'm not saying it's mm -hmm. right or it's good, but nobody in their right mind would consider thousands of shells coming over a border mm -hmm. to be unprovoked or unjustified. Well, it, the thing that pisses me off, <laughs> pisses me off about this can I say that? Mm -hmm. is, um, I don't want to get us in trouble in here, but it's irritating to me because there's a whole bunch of younger generations, right, that are that don't have the context for this, that don't understand how things are actually occurring in other parts of the country. And those are our future leaders, right? And if they missed, you know, getting a civics class in high school, and they're also not getting accurate, you know, honest journalism from most of our uh, news agencies, like where, how are they going to know what's happening in their world? And of course, it's by design, as we know. Mm-hmm. To keep people in the dark and scared and feeling alone and being confused and believing everything that they hear yep, on whatever channel they happen to tune into. Right. But. Right. So, so let's, let's, let's keep going with this real quick. Cause there's one more thing he says. Ukraine's fighting me. for, and all they're asking for is our help. They're not asking for American boots on the ground. Again, I don't think the American people are going to be swayed by one single interview. And I think anybody that watches that interview. Now, again, I haven't seen it. Whatever, whatever's said, need to need to make sure you're, you're, you're remember you're listening to Vladimir Putin, and uh, you shouldn't take at face value anything he has to say. Hmm. So, listen, I, I haven't, I haven't seen the interview, but he's a liar, <laughs> right? So, just to just just go to show. So, so the, remember now, these are the neocons. These are the people in the United States who. Um, who are just desperate to always be at war. And we've been at war my entire adult lifetime. In fact, Trump was the only president who didn't start a war while he was in office, right? Mm -hmm. Only one in my entire light, adult lifetime. So, you know, this is what they like. This is how the whole machinery runs. This is the sort of the beltway crowd. This is what they just, you know, if they're not busy blowing something up and they're not busy wasting a trillion dollars on stuff that goes, they're not happy, right? They, they so they're always going to be provoking a conflict somewhere. And mm -hmm. wrapping it up in this idea of democracy. Now, if you come by peak prosperity, I've been talking a lot uh, of late about a lot of things, including the systems by which people get into office. Oh, I have to be very careful because um, on YouTube, they, they this is one of the areas they censor heavily. And it's around the idea that we don't have an, a system that has any integrity. I bring all the receipts, all the data. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And my point is just that if you're going to be this anxious to export democracy, maybe you ought to have some of it first. You know, that that's my whole thing, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't feel good about exporting something we don't actually have, right? <laughs> Which is where, you know, mm -hmm. you have free, fair, and open elections and people get to make their choices. That that would be awesome, right? So anyway, low marks for this guy, but he's just a hack. He's a stooge. Yep. Must be embarrassing. Now, this all gets serious because... You know, February 7th, the former Russian president, Dmitry Medvedev, says, um, issues direct warning, Russia will unleash nuclear apocalypse if attacked by NATO. So they keep saying this. They've said this many times. They've demonstrated that all of their nuclear weapon systems work. They fired off missiles 
including the new Sarmat, you know, the Satan missile from, you know, they've every platform they the have. Satan, I don't know what that is. It's the Sarmat missile can is um it's a super ICBM. It can launch and bar- apparently get almost anywhere in the world in 30 minutes ish. And it can carry some stupid number of warheads, Yikes. more than 10, I think 10 at least, but it's, it's a big thing. Um, yeah. So Thank it's, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, they have, they have all these other nuclear systems, right? So they can fire them from everything from artillery, little 0.1 kilotonny things to, you know, missiles, planes, trains, automobile subs, you know, mm-hmm. boats. So anyway, that's what, that's what, and they do that. And then they send out these warnings just in case they're, this is Russia saying, we're a little worried you have some leaders who maybe don't quite understand the stakes involved here. And so they want to keep warning us. I don't feel good that they feel like they have to keep reminding us that nuclear war is a bad idea. But that's the world I currently live in, right? Now, to sort of make sense of all this, I think what we got to do is we got to turn to the man who actually has the nuclear football for the United States. We should turn to that right now, which, oh, if you didn't catch this today, you're in for a treat. You're going to love this one. This is awesome. So the Justice Department literally ruled that Biden was is too old and feeble, and so no charges are going to be laid against Biden despite willful mishandling of national security do, national security risk documents because he's too old and feeble to stand trial. <laughs> Don't bother charging him. He's too old and feeble. <laughs> But, he won't be there. <laughs> but he's got the nuclear football. Oh, gosh. Right? So, yeah. So th- this was the ruling. This just came out, Department of Justice. Um, and so, you know, uh, a dear Attorney General Garland, says the uh, assistant or the AG or whatever it was, that said, in close, please find this confidential report. There's the link down there if you want to look at it. You can see that that link. Anyway, um, Babylon B got on it right away. And, and they nail it every time. <laughs> Man ruled too senile to stand trial, still find a run country. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh. They always but, nail but, it. But you know what? That, 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 t- that headline wrote itself. That's literally what just happened. Mm-hmm. That's literally what just happened. Now, now, now so this is, this is something that I need to talk about because for all these years, it's been obvious that, that Joe is demented and senile and not fit for purpose, right? Mm-hmm. But yet we have this whole machinery of the MSNB, CNBC, all those people who are just saying all offended by that Tucker might actually go and just talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. They were so offended by that. These are the same people who've been running interference for the idea that that, that Biden I- I- is fine. Oh, are you a psychologist? You know, like, no, I'm just not an idiot. I mean, the guy tripped over a sandbag and he looked like, you know, he looked like a mannequin going down, uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so... I know. So it, at any rate, um, uh, so carrying on though, look, look at this. This is from page 207. So I did dig through it because I'm that, I'm that kind of, mm-hmm. that's my life. That's what we, yep. That's, that's what, what you, we like about you. Okay. So it said page 207, it says, Mr. Biden's memory also appeared to have significant limitations, both at the time he talked to, spoke to Zwan Eder, Zwan, Zwan Itzer, Zwan Itzer in 2017, as evidenced by the recorded conversations in today out here in 2023 or whenever they're looking into this as evidenced by his recorded interview with our office, Biden's recorded conversations with Zwanitzer from 2017 are often painfully slow with Mr. Biden struggling to remember events and straining at times to read and relay his own notebook entries. Excuse me. This is officially known by his handlers, by his wife, by everybody around him. If if some person... That's who, a while ago. 2017, that's way before the election, mm-hmm. right? Basement Joe, you know, hiding out there, you know, campaigning oh, from his shoot. basement, garnering yes. 81 million votes, right? You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so they knew this. So this is like, this is... So this means we've been gaslit by this apparatus to such an extent that they said, you know what? We care so little for democracy and the overall process. We're literally going to put a man with cognitive deficits in the most powerful position in the country. Not tell you about it. Don't worry about it, though, because he won't actually be running anything. Those of us behind the scenes will be running this. I ask this question all the time. Deep political insiders, I ask them all the time, who is running the White House? Mm-hmm. And they all kind of shrug and they make some guesses, you know, and they throw a bunch of names out. I've never had anybody who said for sure that they know. Right. 
So we're actually not even being led by Biden. Can we just ditch that conceit right away? We're being we're being led by somebody, right? Mm -hmm. But those same somebodies are very offended that Tucker would go and talk to this man, right? So what's the worst that could happen in their minds, you think? They don't want him talking to Tucker because I, I just don't understand what the big deal is. Hmm. Well, I, all I can think is that they just love being in control of the narrative mm -hmm. all the time, right? And this is an opportunity for the narrative to get out of their control. And, I see. And it's Tucker, too, because they know him, right? He just says what he thinks. He asks any questions he wants. He, mm -hmm. he lets people develop long-form answers. Did you see the interview he did with Brett Weinstein, episode 71, mm -hmm. where, where Brett and I had just come back from from the, the from Panama from Panama from the Darien Gap with Michael Yan and Ann Vandersteel and and um, Chuck and Matt and all those people right so that and and so he just let Brett talk and develop these big long hypotheses and and he just and and because of that we get full context so this is what they're afraid of Evie they they hate people doing what we're doing right now which is having long form conversations where we actually bring some some receipts bring mm -hmm. some data because they don't want that. No. They want us to have little tiny conversations where they fed us every piece of misinformation, malinformation, and disinformation. Because that, mm -hmm. that's, that's just how they are. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. So anyway, um, so <laughs> listen, what the date? 2017. He's too slow. He appeared to have limitations, you know? Of course, the internet's awesome. Somebody mocked up the, <laughs> the never mind, <laughs> the album cover. <laughs> Thank you, internet. For the win. That was a good album. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the concern, the concern, it says here, uh, in a case where, this is also from that same document, in a case where the government must prove that Mr. Biden knew, listen to this, this is awesome. All right. Knew he had possession of the classified Afghanistan documents after the vice presidency and chose to keep those documents knowing he was violating the law. We expect that at trial, well, his attorneys would emphasize these limitations in his recall. They're literally laying out like why they're not going to charge him like, oh, because, you know, it was pretty clear. He he just, you know, we have to prove <laughs> that he knew he had these documents. But that's tough because, uh, you know, <laughs> it's pretty clear his recall sucked. So he we couldn't prove that he knew. He'd get too and, and, it, and his attorneys would emphasize these these limitations. So you know what they're afraid of? You know what they're afraid of, Evie? What? They're afraid of this. <laughs> your honor my client doesn't remember doing it right it's crazy you know i saw a they campaign there's a campaign sort of uh what, what would you call it one of those um paid for by joe biden blah 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 um mm -hmm. commercial and what was interesting was uh obama was actually doing all the talking Joe Biden wasn't saying like, here we are, you know, here's Obama and he plops in a few words. It's strictly Obama. You think they're going that way? Are they, <laughs> are we going to get Michelle, Michelle, Michael? Mi oh, you, oh mean? <laughs> you went there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't care. It's just disturbing to me. The dishonesty disturbs me deeply. All That's right. what bothers me too. Me, me, about me this. too. Me too. And, it, and it's the obvious, it's just the, it's that, can we just, can we please, this is, it's so insulting that we have to pretend that none of us can see this emperor has no clothes mm -hmm. or to bring mm -hmm. in this case. Right. All right. I, I have some questions for you, uh, unless you're finished talking about um, the actual interview. You do. Well, let me just finish this. Cause I, okay. I got, I got to get through this one piece on, yeah, on, on it. this, um, on this gentleman with a nuclear football. Um, <laughs> So it says, in his interview with our office, Mr. Biden's memory was worse. He did not remember when he was vice president. Forgetting on the first day of the interview when his term ended. If it was 2013, now when did I stop being vice president? This is 2017, right? And forgetting on the second day of the interview when his term began, right? In 2009, am I still vice president? He did not remember even within several years when his son, Bo, died. Couldn't, couldn't place that. Wow. That's yeah. like the other day when he was talking about, it was a general or somebody that had died. Like, 
Yeah. 25 years ago or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah no, exactly. Um, so this is the man with nuclear football. Remember, I think we can capture this in a single word, the level of the deficit. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Did I not grab... America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was going to put him... In, uh, oh, I don't think it... I can hear it. No, nah, it just didn't come through. Darn it. Oh, this one was so funny. <laughs> Where did you find this? America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was going to put him in... Uh, put, <laughs> <laughs> I love how it ends with a do, 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 do. It's, it's so stately. I might have sent that to you. So stately. So this is from that report. Like this is where these things were recorded, stored. Now remember, remember, Trump was indicted for mishandling documents. Look at this. This is where they are. That that's a box of top secret classified documents in his garage in Delaware like circled in red. And then there's that, there's a closet back there, which just just has a bunch of classified documents on a shelf in his, in his, uh, garage. And, and here they are stacked up next to his desk. They had all these pictures, right? They, they, they brought all of this stuff and then, um, and then even CNN. So you can feel it though. This is why I'm going here. I can feel it. They're getting ready to replace this guy. They could have done this. They could have thrown all of this down years ago, Mm. 2017, even they didn't. Now listen to this. This is CNN. So take this for where you're where it's coming from. Uh, but I think there is also a potentially uh, very damaging political headline that we really need to take a beat uh, to talk about uh, as well. And that is simply put uh, that the president is an elderly man with a bad memory. Uh, if you look through the report and I'm just. Oh, All right. <gasps> Can you feel the wind? Did that wind just quarter about on our sails? It definitely did. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. He's not uh, useful to them anymore, I guess. It's it's coming. And and by the way, just to to round this out, so so this is uh, Google. If you look what I typed in, Biden inauguration, this is what they show you. See that? Look at all those pictures. There's Jill and Joe and it's all these people and there's stairs and it looks interesting, right? Mm Mm-hmm. But remember, this is the man who can't seem to get our border. Like, how would we possibly secure our border? But do you remember this? I'm old enough to remember this. Inauguration, January 20th, 2021. The razor wire, yes. (laughs) They got fences and razor wire up. They pulled in 20,000 guard troops. They kicked everybody out. That was our inauguration. If you didn't have the vibe of what was going to happen on that day, right? You remember this? That's a potent picture right there. You remember this? This was it. So remember when Trump had his inauguration, there were like, I don't know, a million, million and a half people there because they, they do it on the steps and it goes all the way up the reflecting pools like this big thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if many people have seen this, but this is really important. This is some journalist managed to sneak on a rooftop or was very far away, had a big lens and took a video of the inauguration on that day. Um, there is, is no security threat down here. Look at that. Look. Uh, it's just a lie. And I think they brought in these 25,000 troops because what are Biden could 300 get people there? People. And it's a cover. Uh, it's very sad. Um, I never saw this view before. I was going to come on here and try to be funny, but <clears throat> I'm actually sad. Should be. Um, this place is a ghost town. Look all of this. D.C. is a ghost town. All, the businesses have been like, pummeled oh. by these lockdowns and all these um, problems. And, uh, so I have a question. If you did experience a coup, how would it look differently than those pictures I just showed? Mm. How would it, what would be different? (laughs) How would you know? (laughs) How would you know? That's the question. Mm. All right. Um, so do you have some questions there? Cause we can certainly. No, I was just curious about, you know, how what your thoughts are about Putin, like how he came off to you and what part of his speech was most interesting to you. And if you learned something, if anything was unveiled in that, that you didn't already know, or, you know, did you agree with his uh, method of sort of laying out the facts and was, was he believable? 
Well, there were a couple of, there were just two spots that caught me where I was thinking, okay, now we're getting interesting because Tucker really leaned in. Mm -hmm. And one of them was around the Nord Stream mm -hmm. bombing. Yeah. And so there were a couple of questions before this, but I'm going to read from a transcript here. I've pulled it up on the screen and um, we didn't have time or permission to, to pull the clip. So I'm just going to read it. Uh, Tucker Carlson asked, yes, but here's a question you may be able to answer. Would you worked in Germany famously. The Germans clearly know that their NATO partner did this, that is bombing the Nord Stream pipeline. Um, but they and it damaged their economy greatly and it may never recover. Why are they being silent about it? That's very confusing to me. Why wouldn't the Germans say something about it? And Putin says, uh, this also confuses me, but today's German leadership is guided by the interests of the collective West rather than its national interests. Otherwise, it is difficult to explain the logic of their action or inaction. After all, it is not only about Nord Stream 1, which was uh, blown up, and the Nord Stream 2, which was damaged, but one pipe is safe and sound and can be uh, still supplied to Europe through it, but Germany does not open it. And so what's happening instead there is that Germany is paying exorbitant prices for LNG, mm -hmm. and its industrialized economy is getting just hollowed out. So these are its energy-intensive industries, but basic stuff where you, the real value add starts, right? You know, you're going to make steel, aluminum ingots, uh, you know, borosilicate glasses, all that stuff. That's mm -hmm. just just gutted. Um, and right. so why doesn't Germany do something about that? It is indeed confusing. So I found that part interesting. And and by the way, <clears throat> um, so when Tucker asked, he, he said, uh, hey, who did blow up the Nord Stream, right? And Vladimir Putin said, you for sure. Little jokey thing. Yeah, but, yeah. And Tucker said, oh, I was busy that day. I have I'd, an alibi. I have yeah. an alibi, right? <laughs> and Vladimir Putin said, you personally may have had an alibi, but the CIA has no such alibi. Mm. That got interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. And so Tucker said, did you have evidence that NATO or the CIA did it? And Putin said, oh, you know, I won't get into details, which I is a sh I, I wish he would, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you got him, smoke him, right? But, and then he said, but people always say in such cases... Look for someone who is interested. But in this case, we should not only look for someone who's interested, but also for someone who has capabilities. You need those two things, interest, motive, and opportunity, mm -hmm. capabilities and, and mm -hmm. interest, right? Because there uh, are many people interested, but not all of them are capable of sinking to the bottom of the Baltic Sea and carrying out this explosion. Uh, these two components should be connected. Who is interested and who is capable of doing it? So... Um, Oh, I didn't bring it in here. So, um, but what I, uh, it, it just, it just happened, um, today or yesterday, Sweden, Sweden was in charge of that, uh, cause right off of their coast where the pipelines blew up, Sweden was in charge of that investigation, and, yeah, right? investigation. And, and they finally punted today. They said, we're going to turn over all the evidence we have to the Germans it's out of our jurisdiction. <laughs> 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 right what could that mean well it can't mean that many things mm -hmm. right what they're basically saying is that the whoever did this it's above their pay grade for little old sweden to name them Oof. right so sweden would be perfectly happy to name iran if they had fingerprints pointing back there mm -hmm. i can't imagine why they would stall on ukraine if that was actually the story because that was the cover story they ran with after a month and a half of them scrambling to try and come up with a cover story. It was I remember like, that. It was four guys on a sailboat. <laughs> like, then they showed this, this sailboat that could carry maybe like three people in a six pack. You know, it was like, a, it was like, oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's where they did a 200 foot deep dive with massive explosives. Sure. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a dumb cover story. But, um, so uh, it, listen, uh, Sweden clearly came up with evidence it was either NATO or the U.S. or both. Mm -hmm. That's and the only way I can read that particular yeah. information yeah so you liked putin and how he laid out information like that you wished he had gone into a little more detail mm -hmm. in some instances yeah it seems like he abdicated out of what seemed like what felt like honor like i'm not going to go into this conversation and in some there were some points where he's like why don't you go ask your leader um he said that quite a few times well i mean you gotta you gotta contrast it one thing he comes off as obviously a statesman right mm-hmm where he's he's going to hold certain levels of confidentiality and he, he plays that game safely, right? right? Cautiously. He's not like a Lindsey Graham, bomb him, bomb them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not flapping his gums for you know? the sake of it. Yeah. Uh, not not that caliber of statesman, mm -hmm. right? And all of that. So um, at any rate, 
What did he say at the very end? I didn't make it to that before we had to. Oh, it kind of wobbled a, a little bit towards towards the end there, because um, it sort of ended, and then they had one more question, and yeah, then it kept going a little bit. What was bit. the like closing line? Do you recall? Thank you. That's that's what Tucker said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Tucker kind of looked like a, a deer in headlights the whole time. His eyes were all wide. Because you know how well, his, you, this, his typical way is he's kind of joking around. But this he took, you could tell he was taking very seriously very and trying to listen. And the translator. Because he's, somebody's yelling in his ear while he's trying to focus on how, he, how oh. the words are being conveyed. And there's a lag. So from an interview standpoint, I can really appreciate this. It, it's hard. Mm. To even just really be fully present in an interview, formulating the next question in your head, but also watching and listening for when something new has been said. So you have to have a lot of faculties activated, but with a translator sort of barking in your ear. Yeah, that must a, be one hard. more layer of difficulty, I think. That so must be hard. Yeah. So was that person obviously translating to Putin as well? Like Yeah, he had a he had a was translating. Because I thought the other he had way. an earpiece. Yeah. That that's gotta be weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just changes yeah. the cadence of things. Indeed. Um, so, I mean, with that, uh, gosh, I don't know. What else can we say about, about that particular adventure? Um, I'm really disappointed in the press in this country, beyond disappointed. Mm -hmm. I'm really disappointed in our leadership, just beyond disappointed. Because, look, the way I see this now is we're under attack, right? Our SPR, our Strategic Petroleum Reserve, got drained. Um, oh, yeah. You, yeah, you want to, okay, you want to, here, I forgot to talk about this part because you want to talk about the kind of attacks that drive me nuts. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Okay, this is no bueno. No bueno. You ready for this one? This is shocking. Trigger warning for everyone. Um, so this just came out. The Congressional Budget Office just came out and said, oh, uh, you know, due to the exceptionally awesome... Due to the exceptionally awesome leadership in the United States, uh, our structural deficit is going to be $1.6 trillion in 2024, and over the next 10 years, it's going to climb to $2.6 trillion. And when you look at this across that time, you get red bars that look like this. And it averages out to about another $20 plus trillion plus of new debt is going to be added to the $34 trillion, Which is going to give us $54 trillion or something. We win! Or $55 <laughs> trillion. I, and 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 uh, by the way, this is without any. This is just structurally. This is laws on the books. This is just how it's going to play out. And this is with no, absolutely no recessions. Because if you have a recession in there, one of those or more of those, two of those red bars go way deeper, right? That's that's what we see back there in 2020. That's why that red bar goes ouch. way down there because recession, right? So that's what we're going to see. This is this is part of the attack structure right here. It's, this is whoever whoever's doing this. Like Washington D.C. is not your friend. They are busy ruining the country in the United States. However, this seems to be a project to dismantle what we would call Western civilization. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm reading it now, because this is a kind of Europe's being dismantled and, and, and God bless their farmers who rose up and at least pushed back the, the nonsense for another little bit that, you know, they're like the farmers won. Like, no, they didn't. They got them to stop their stupid rules for now. But, you know, they're coming back like cockroaches. Oh, you know, but they're already rewriting like new stupid or laws like right already. Like <laughs> right know. now it's happening. Right. <laughs> and, and so and so it's just it's the our way of life is under assault. Our, our sense of honor that that our sense of of um, anything that, that we could agree with, like around morals. Mm -hmm. Our border is not a border. Our schools are not schooling at this point in time. It's just amazing how bad this is. It seems like uh, our the world is changing into this more globalist sort of place, and and no emphasis on nationalism, you know, or individuals, or individuals, but being like you don't count, you know, each individual country not really mattering as much as the whole global. And of course, there are smaller parts of a, a larger whole, but. That's something I took away from that speech or that interview was just mm. I could feel his pride for his country and just kind of like, well, why would they, you know, what is wrong with these people? Like, clearly, they're not acting in the interests of their own people. Right. Germany for not opening this other pipeline and, you know, sort of swallowing their pride so that they can have the energy they need to mm -hmm. keep their economy going or whatever. No. Yeah, that's a really good point. I remember uh, that is uh, I remember that part of the interview, too. And I remember being confused a little bit at the time because this was before I 
sort of understood what we were up against, but I think they weren't confused. Remember there was this, this girl, girl group, or at least there were two of them called Pussy Riot, and they were trying to really push this whole trans gay thing. I think it was more gay than trans, but it was this, you know, they were trying to really open up and, and liberalize Russia for gay stuff. And Russia's like, now nah, we're not doing that. Right. Um, and so they put them in prison and all that. And I remember the West was collectively outraged by, by this whole thing. But Putin at the time was really clear. He said, these are the sorts of advances that, you know, if you want them to go into culture, you need to give them time. You don't just come and do them. Mm. These are things that they have longstanding traditions and we have this and that. He said, culture is not something you just wrestle about like it's a lever on a train. He said, mm. these are things that have to be done thoughtfully. And these are people trying to ram, ram it down our throats. And by the way, they have a lot of Western backing, probably George Soros. And we're not interested in that. He was very clear, but he stood up for his culture. And that's a no, no. Remember, remember why, you know, Muammar Gaddafi got attacked? Because he wanted to create a gold bag dinar and totally sidestep the Western Central Banks and like, that's a foul. Mm -hmm. Ooh, bombs. You know, that's what happened. Right. Mm -hmm. So the story here is that these these so-called collectivists, these Western interests, right? What they don't want is they don't want you standing up for yourself. They yeah, don't they want don't. you to have a sense of honor, of purpose, of pride in your nation. They don't want you to have any sense that you have an individual say in anything. They just want you to feel like it's all this big giant thing and, and you're, it's out of your hands, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's been the story. And, um, and so I think that's why they were so freaked out about Putin because he was going to come on and say, I care about my, my people and I'm going to protect Russia and I'm going to protect her interests. And that's just how it's going to be. And they're like, we don't want that catching on. <laughs> and P.S. It didn't have to be this way. Ooh, good point. To your, you it know, the way to, that it, you it always say that. Way. I think that's kind of what he was aiming at. Yeah. And what he might expose. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. That is our live cast for today. I hope you got something from it. If you haven't seen my material before, this is how I roll. I bring the goods. I bring the receipts. That's what Peak Prosperity is. Evie and I, um, we, uh, we have a very beautiful community over at Peak Prosperity. Our subscription membership over there is uh, where we have our most private and most wide-ranging conversations. And, of course, I'm bringing content like this there all the time because you need to know what's going on today in this world. So with that, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for being here. Evie, it's been wonderful being here with you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks, everybody, for being here. We will see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.